Well, it's a pleasure to be with you all in the Lord's house this evening. If you have your Bibles, would you turn to Zechariah chapter 7 with me? Zechariah chapter 7. Tonight, continuing through the book of Zechariah, uh, the passage that we'll be looking at today, uh, the, the whole of chapter 7, actually has uh, quite a bit to do with what we talked about uh, this morning. And so we'll be uh, uh, going back over some of, those, uh, some of those admonitions that we heard from the scripture there. And uh, so uh, tonight, let's just go ahead and uh, begin reading together. In verse 1 of chapter 7, the scripture says, And it came to pass in the fourth year of King Darius that the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah in the fourth day of the ninth month, even in Chilslu, when they had sent unto the house of God Sherezer and Regmelech and their men to pray before the Lord and to speak unto the priests which were in the house of the Lord of hosts, and to the prophets, saying, Should I weep in the fifth month, separating myself as I have done these so many years? Then spake the word of the Lord of hosts unto me, saying, Speak unto all the people in the land, and to the priests, saying, When ye fasted and mourned in the fifth month, uh, the fifth and seventh month, even those seventy years, did ye at all fast unto me, even to me? And when ye did eat, and when ye did drink, did not ye eat for yourselves, and drink for yourselves? Should ye not hear the words which the Lord hath cried by the former prophets, when Jerusalem was inhabited and in prosperity, and the cities thereof round about her, when men inhabited the south and the plain? And the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Execute true judgment, and show mercy, and, com and compassions every man to his brother. And oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless, the stranger, nor the poor. And let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart. But they refused to hearken and pulled away the shoulder, and stopped their ears that they should not hear. Yea, they made their hearts as an adamant stone, lest they should hear the law and the words which the Lord of hosts has sent in his spirit by the former prophets. Therefore, from the Lord of hosts, therefore it has come to pass that, he, that as he cried, and they would not hear, so they cried, and I would not. Here, saith the Lord of hosts, but I scattered them with a whirlwind among all the nations whom they knew not. Thus the land was desolate after them, that no man passed through nor returned, for, there, for they laid the pleasant land desolate. And now let's go to our Lord in prayer. Father God, we come before you again and we thank you for your word we thank you for the grace that allows us to come together and worship in this place together and lord we pray for those who couldn't be with us tonight lord that you would again be with them as you always are to show them your goodness and kindnesses towards them lord even in their troubles that you keep them that by your grace and mercy to them they have faith in jesus christ and can still grow in him and lord we pray that you would ever show that to them Lord, we pray that uh, you would be with us in this place, and if there are any lost in here, that you would draw them by your Spirit to have faith in Jesus Christ. We pray that you would help us as we leave this place to do your will, uh, Lord, to show mercy to the world, especially by the preaching of the gospel. And we pray that you'd help our missionaries to, to do the same where they are. Uh, Lord, we pray for our leaders, uh, that you would help them to make right choices for you, to govern this land according to your law. And Lord, we pray that where we've sinned against you, that you'd forgive us and that you'd cleanse us from unrighteousness. And it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. So the passage that we're looking at tonight consists of two main parts. 
The first part, which is very short, is a question that is being sent from some of the elders in Judah. Uh, and the second part, the major part, is the answer of the Lord to that question. And the question that they wanted a uh, answered uh, was, should they continue to fast and mourn over the sins of Judah, just as they had done in the captivity? When they were taken away into Babylon and they were scattered to the nations, the Jews took up the practice of, of mourning. They, they set days during the year that they would fast and they would weep and mourn for their desolation. In verse 1 again, we read, It came to pass in the fourth year of Darius that the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah in the fourth day of the ninth month, even Chislu. When they had sent unto the house of God, Sher Ezer, Regmelech, and their men to pray before the Lord, and to speak unto the priests which were in the house of the Lord of hosts, and, to pro and the prophets, saying, Should I weep in the fifth month, separating myself as I have done these so many years? So they're asking whether they should again come and they should shut themselves away to weep and mourn over the sin of their people. And this attitude of mourning for sin is not a wrong attitude to have. We should mourn for our sin. We should uh, come and weep before the Lord when we know and, and we've been shown by him that we don't live up to his standards. Matthew 5 verse 3 says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. When we are poor in spirit, we know our depravity. We know that we are not as we should be. And we mourn for our sin. It says we are blessed. That it's, it's a good thing. It's something that God smiles at when he sees in his people. James 4.8 says, Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted, and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. And so it's a, it's a good thing. Uh, they were asking after whether they should mourn and, and they should fast because of their sin. Uh, and uh, it's not something that God universally looks down on uh, when we do mourn for our sin. We do repent. We ask God for forgiveness and we try to to turn away from that in sorrow as best we can but this if we only have uh, the externals the weeping and the mourning and coming on a set day to weep and mourn and repent just as these were asking after then it is not desirable to God just weeping, just mourning, just fasting. God does not want that. He wants us to turn away from the evil ways that we had been in. And so he answers the question that they had sent to him by questioning their sincerity. He answers their question with a question. In verse 4, Then came the word of the Lord of hosts unto me, saying, Speak unto all the people of the land, and to the priests, saying, When ye fasted and mourned in the fifth and seventh month, even those seventy years, did ye at all fast unto me, even to me? And when ye did eat, and when ye did drink, did not ye eat for yourselves and drink for yourselves? He, he's saying, he's asking, when you fasted, when you mourned, when you uh, went away from fasting and mourning and you went back into eating and drinking and rejoicing. He says, in any of that, did you do that for me? Did you do that because of your sin, because of what I had called you, uh, what I had said to you, how I rebuked you and you were mourning for that? Or did you do it for yourselves? Did you do it in an external way, uh, just as what we might call today virtue signaling. Uh, we know that, that uh, in our culture, there are people who have this uh, external uh, you know, signs of piety. They say, well, 
you know, I am uh, concerned about such and such, uh, this people group or that people group, uh, or uh, this type of sin or that type of sin. Well, it was the same in those days. What they were doing when they were fasting and mourning is they were virtue signaling. It wasn't, it wasn't genuine repentance. And God wants genuine repentance. In Matthew 6, verse 1, Take heed that you do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, ye have no reward of your Father, which is in heaven. And in verse 5, And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. And in verse 16, Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. This is exactly what was going on with the people here in Zechariah, the elders of Judah. They were asking, should I go as I have done all these years? Uh, going in mourning, going in and, and fasting because of the sin of Judah, because ostensibly of their own sin that they were mourning over. And yet God says they did it not for him. They did it for themselves. In verse 7, should ye not hear the words which the Lord hath cried by the former prophets, when Jerusalem was inhabited and in prosperity, and the cities thereof round about her, when men inhabited the south and the plain. He says, rather than fasting and mourning, rather than having these external signs, he says you should listen to what the Lord says to you. You should do what he says, not just uh, not sin and then go and cry about your sin, and then going back into the sin, rather to go and hear what the Lord says and do what the Lord says. Listen to what the prophets had said of old, what they had said to their fathers before them. In Ezekiel thirty-three thirty-one, which we read this morning, they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words, but they will not do them. For with their mouth... They show much love, but their heart goeth after their covetousness. And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. For they hear thy words, but they do them not. They, have, just as they had with Ezekiel, just as they had before the carrying away to Babylon, they had an external religion, an external religion desire for God, an external mourning over sin and, 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 and loving the word of God. But when it came down to it, they did not turn from their sin. He had warned them, and when they turned away from it, they, uh, they ate of the work of their own hands. And so... God here calls them once again, as he had before, to do his will, to show mercy to his people. In verse 8, the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Execute true judgment, and show mercy and compassions every man to his brother. And oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless, the stranger, nor the poor, and let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart. He was calling them to love their neighbor as their, as their selves, to love their brothers and sisters, to love the fatherless and the widow, to take care of them as they should have been doing the entire time. And this is exactly, again, what he told to their fathers before. This is what he had continued to tell Israel ever since. In Amos 5.21, a passage, of course, uh, given before Babylon. I hate and despise your feast days, and I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. That is, smell the incense, the sweet savor. 
Though ye offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them. Neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat beasts. Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs, for I will not hear the melody of thy vials. Uh, just as they had before, they had their feast days. They had days set aside to come and worship the Lord. Now they had their days of mourning that they had added likewise. Uh, he, they're asking, should I go as times pass and mourn and weep for the sin of Judah? Well, in times past, that uh, uh, just setting aside a special day, the coming and on that day showing up and, 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 and giving uh, outward worship to God, God did not want that. God saw what was in their heart. Again, in Amos 5 and verse 24, but let judgment run down as waters and righteousness as a mighty stream. The same call that, that we have in our passage for judgment, to, to do good by God's people. In verse 25, have ye offered unto me sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness forty years, O house of Israel? But ye have borne the tabernacle of your mullock and chew in your images, the star of your God, which ye made to yourselves. Therefore will I cause you to go into captivity beyond Damas Damascus, saith the Lord, whose name is the, the God of hosts. Uh, they, uh, in their neglect of God's worship, uh, in their neglect of judgment and righteousness and mercy, they uh, were found in idolatry. Uh, just again, as we saw this morning when we were in Ezekiel 33, uh, that they had outward religion, they had uh, Sunday morning Christianity, and the rest of the week they went out and did nothing else. Uh, and they came at that time uh, into the temple and they were asking, whether they should come and have this feast day, or the, not this feast day, but this day of mourning, uh, to, to set that aside, to mourn over their sin, and to outwardly do God's will. And for this neglect of God's word that he had called on them to do, God threatens against them the same punishment that he gave to their fathers. In verse 11, but they refused to hearken and pulled away the shoulder and stopped their ears that they should not hear, speaking of their fathers before Babylon. Yea, they made their hearts as an adamant stone, lest they should hear the law and the words of the Lord of hosts uh, hath sent in his spirit by the former prophets. Therefore came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. In times past, when he had sent the prophets before Babylon, uh, it says that they refused to hearken. They at first simply would not listen. They continued walking. And then they pulled away the shoulder. They uh, were more uh, set in their uh, absence of, of hearkening to the voice of the Lord. And then at the last, they stopped their ears so they would not hear his word. Uh, they continued to go down and down and down, worse and worse and worse. And God is threatening, the, or uh, he's warning the people against this attitude of, of getting worse and worse. In verse 13, therefore it has come to pass that as he cried and they would not hear, so they cried and I would not hear, saith the Lord of hosts. But I scattered them with a whirlwind among all the nations whom they knew not. Thus the land was desolate after them, that no man passed through nor returned, for they laid the pleasant land desolate. Uh, when that happened, when they turned away from the word of the Lord, again, they still had a, an external religion. They still thought that they were uh, dedicating themselves to uh, God Almighty, but when they pulled away, when they would not hear, when they would not do his will, God scattered them away. And this is what God again is threatening against the men in Zechariah's generation. 
not to get caught up on this setting aside a day of mourning and having external religion, uh, not to virtue signal as their parents had done, but rather to have genuine repentance, genuinely seeking to do God's will. And of course, we know that eventually, just as we read earlier about how in Christ's days, the hypocrites disfigured their faces. They wanted to appear before men to fast and to pray that it happened again in Jerusalem, that the religious leaders and the religion of the people became uh, so watered down and so superficial that God sent the same judgment on them again, this time through the Romans. And so we have a prophecy given again about what God would do to Israel. And also to us, a warning that if we as a people, we as a church, uh, as the churches even in our area, uh, corporately, if we just have external religion, if we don't genuinely seek to do God's will, to show mercy to all men, to bring the gospel of Christ and his judgment to bear on their lives, and if we just set aside Sunday, we set aside Easter, we set aside Christmas to come and worship together and do nothing else, then the Lord will scatter. The Lord will take away the candlestick from being a church. And so, believers, tonight we've heard the dangers of mourning over sin and becoming over fixated on uh, setting aside and having uh, outward religion in our lives, but we see the need for inward religion, inward love for Christ, inwardly seeking to know him and love him, and that inward desire driving us out to do his will in the real world. And so let's go from this place and uh, pray that the Lord would stir us up in such a way. And now if there's an unbeliever here tonight, sorrow over the consequences of sin is not enough to save you. If you are relying on a bad feeling that you have when you think about how you've sinned or the consequences that sin has brought to you, that is not enough. That is not righteousness. You need Christ and his righteousness. If you are only sorrowful for sin, then you will not be saved. You must let that sorrow drive you to Jesus Christ. Matthew 8, verse 11, Jesus said, I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. If all you have is weeping, if all you have is, is a feeling of sorrow for sin and you don't trust in Jesus Christ, then the scripture says there is a place for those that weep because of the consequences of their sin. They shall weep and gnash their teeth and burn for all eternity. And so tonight I simply call on you to turn to Jesus Christ. Don't just treat mourning over sin as an end in itself. Uh, your sorrow does not merit you one bit before a righteous God. And so turn to Jesus Christ and ask after his righteousness. John 3.35 says that the Father loveth the Son and hath given all things into his hand. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life but the wrath of God abideth on him. The only way of escaping the wrath of God is to believe on Jesus Christ. Your sorrow may drive you to him. Your sorrow may motivate you to trust in him, but sorrow alone does nothing for you if it does not bring you to Jesus Christ. And so I would pray that you Trust in him tonight before it's too late. And again, believers, let's uh, leave this place and not be mere hearers of the word, but doers of the word. 
seeking God's will for us, uh, seeking to bring his gospel uh, to those that we know and to uh, better those around us uh, by the things he's given us. And now let's go to our Lord in prayer. Father God, again, we come before you and we thank you for your word. Lord, we pray tonight that you would engraft it to our hearts. Lord, that you would make it effectually work in us. And we ask that you would uh, that you would make us useful to you this week, Lord. Uh, Lord, we pray that you would send someone our way that we can talk to about Christ. And we also pray that you would work in their hearts so that they would trust in him and be saved. Lord, we pray that you'd be with our missionaries in the same way. Lord, give them all that they need. And Lord, uh, remind them of us so that we may be in their prayers. Lord, we ask that you would be with those that couldn't be here with us tonight to keep them safe. Lord, to give them health and bring them back so we can worship together again. And Lord, we pray that where we've sinned against you, you'd forgive us and that you keep us safe till Christ's coming. This in his holy name we pray. Amen.